Yes, students, we are going to discuss about the lecture number one, that is the basic concepts of machine design. Presented by Professor S.Y. Power, Department of Mechanical Engineering, for the subject Design of Machine Elements, one, third year Mechanical Engineering. So the first part that we are going to discuss is introduction of design of machine element. So, what is design? So, design is nothing but it's a formula which is used or which can plan satisfy a particular need and to create something with physical reality the realization of a concept or idea into a configuration so design is the creation of a plan or convention for the construction of an object system or measurable human interaction so whenever we we are going to plan something and if you want to satisfy a particular need and if you are going to convert that need into the physical reality then you can call it as a design in other words realization of a concept or idea into actual configuration so design is you can also call it as a plan or convention for the construction of an object system or measurable human interaction so what is machine design so you know that machine is a combination of several machine elements which are arranged to work together as a whole to accomplish a specific purpose. So machine design involves designing of the elements and arranging them optimally to obtain some useful work. So machine design is the process of engineering design. Now if we are going to consider a machine, definitely it is going to be consist of number of mechanism which are work together in order to satisfy the requirement of what the machine needs to accomplish. So in general machine design is nothing but the combination of machine and the design principles. So we can arrange the machine elements and we can obtain whatever the required output. So there are three types of design. First one is adaptive design, another is development design and third one is new design. So adaptive design is nothing but it is going to be the adaptation of existing design. So whenever the existing product is going to be there, if you are going to add some minor modification or if you are going to alter some existing design of the product, then it is going to be called as an adaptive product. Now development design. In this particular type of design, uh, we need some scientific training and we must have a design ability in order to modify the existing design into a new idea. So by adopting a new material or a different method of manufacture. So for development design, the selection of material and the various manufacturing method, this knowledge you must have. So whenever the designer is going to start from the existing design, but when the design process end, the final product may be different from the original product. Now the next part is new design. The, this type of design needs a lot of research, technical ability and creative thinking. So we can completely develop a new design. Now the machine design can be further classified as rational design, empirical design and industrial design. So what is rational design? So for rational design, the basic knowledge of strength of materials or you can call it as a stresses or strengths, it is very important. So whenever you know the stress and strength formula, so you can easily uh, say determine the various forces acting on the component and you can determine their dimension. So this type of design is generally based on the mathematical formula of principle of mechanics. So some and mechanics both knowledge are required for rational design. Now empirical design. So name itself indicates what is empirical design. So the empirical design is nothing but the design in which we are going to use certain number of empirical formulas. Let us consider an example. Suppose if we want to determine the diameter of shaft. So by using different theories of failure Say let us consider for example maximum shear stress theory. So by using simple equation T is equal to pi by 16 into tau into d cube. So we can easily determine the diameter of the shaft. So this is nothing but the empirical design. So whenever you are going to apply empirical formulas for this particular type of design then it's a empirical design. Now the next one is the industrial design. So industrial design is uh, say quite different than rational and empirical. 
so what are the different steps required for industrial design so first of all we need some basic knowledge of market survey uh, what exactly the shape and size of the product what are the different production facilities we have then what is the proposed cost of the uh, product then what are the standard different products are available in the market so based on the all industrial data we have to design so again rational design empirical design and industrial design these are what we can say the practical approaches or practical classification of the design so the next part is what are the factors to be considered in machine design very first and important which type of mechanism we are going to use so for the mechanism arrangement what are the different constituent elements uh, it is they are involved in that particular mechanism you have to think over it so say for example if you want to design a four wheeler so at that time you must know what are the different mechanisms that can be incorporated in the particular four wheeler so whenever all these elements are clubbed together they are going to perform their function second and very important material so what are this material you are going to select for the design purpose so you can say it is a important factor because cost of the material plays a very very important role if you are going for cheaper material then cost of the final product will be less if you are going to uh, if you are going to select certain advanced material then cost of the product is going to be more then next is forces on the elements so based on the knowledge of mechanics and strength of material you can or you are supposed to do the force analysis then next important what is the size of the final product that is important then next shape and space requirement so shape and space requirement uh, i will just share one very good example that is gearbox design so gearbox design now basically the gear, whenever you are going to design a gearbox the very important primary requirement of that gearbox that it should be compact in size so you can apply this principle and another important requirement is that what is the minimum space required for the particular gearbox and the next is the weight of the product so what is going to be the final weight of the product this that is also another factor which is to be considered now another when we are going to move for the manufacturing capabilities so at that time the manufacturing facilities what facilities we have that we must know then after manufacturing facilities then we have to just imagine or think how it is going to operate then reliability and safety aspects yes definitely what are the product you are going to design it should be reliable and it should conforms to the safety standard then next is inspectability so the pro what are the product is going to be uh, say produce definitely it is going to be subjected for the inspection so it should pass that inspection stage then when you are going to install that product for actual working the maintenance plays very important and the last is cost and aesthetic so cost uh, we have already discussed so for cost overall cost is to be considered and aesthetic aesthetic is nothing but the shape size of the final finished product so these are all factors are must be considered for the machine design so on this particular topic there may be a question may be asked explain different factors considered for machine design the question will be asked for four to six marks so you have to write down all the aspects and a simple explanation with some typical applications you are supposed to write down then next and very important what is the general procedure so very first and important part what is the need or aim for what purpose we are going to design that you have to specify then next part is synthesis or mechanism yes we have just discussed the mechanism is nothing but number of elements which are going to be perform their function when they are clubbed together so synthesis you must carry out in order to see whether or how that mechanism is going to perform then another important part that is analysis of forces again based on based on the knowledge of mechanics and so on you have to carry out the force analysis purpose or the method the next part is selection of material what is the material you are going to select that is also important then next part is design of individual element you have to design each and every element separately and then you have to just club them together so your mechanism will be formed now the next is 
if you if designer thinks that there might be some modification has to be incorporated then he will check the dimensions and uh, say what are the quality of the finished product so based on that you can go for the modification stage so once all the modifications are going to be uh, done then the next step will be the preparation of the detail drawing so you can go for uh, say various softwares that are available that is say autocad or some modeling softwares are there so uh, detail drawing will be incorporated into into those software and whatever the output we have that output or say the printout of the drawing will be supplied to the production department so in production department whatever the workers or manufacturing people are going to be there they are they, they are going to observe it and they will perform the production activities now the next part is standardization so standardization is nothing but what are the obligatory or standard norms uh, that product must satisfy okay so in uh, various countries various standards are going to be vary as per their need and designation so in standardization whenever say for example if you are going to consider various characteristics of the product such as what are the different types of materials what are the different dimensions and of shape of the component what are the different method of testing what is the method of marking their packing and storing everywhere you can apply the standardization so in general what is the definition of standard it is defined as it is a set of specification for parts materials or processes the objective of a standard is to reduce the variety and limit the number of items to a reasonable level so standard is nothing but in short what we can say it is a set of specification for parts or material or a process that means it should follow what are the obligatory norms are going to be there you can call it as a standard now there is one another term that is called as a code so whenever code is going to be considered it is defined as a set of specification for the analysis design manufacture testing and erection of the product so the purpose of a code is to achieve a specified level of safety so one question must be arises what are the different types of standards so first type is the company standard whenever you are going you, you are going to think about the various company standard so each and every company will have their different standard so you must satisfy those company standards then as per uh, say we have just discussed that as your countries are going to be vary so the standards are going to be vary so let us consider in india bureau of indian standards we are going to follow and for example in usa american iron and steel institute or ac so like this you can go and follow the national standard and the last one is the international standard international standard are the you can call them as iso standard they are very popular and for the whole world when at any part of the world when we are going to select the iso standard whatever the shape size dimensions of the products are going to be there it will be the same so in general practice is that always go and follow the international standards so there are a variety of examples like you can go for standard of materials you can go for standard of shapes and dimension then you can go for standards like fits tolerances and surface finish of the product you can also go for a standard for testing of product so accordingly based on the uh, say what is the requirement you can go and select the different types of standards so what are the benefits of the standards so reduction in types and dimension of the identical components reduction in manufacturing facilities we can easily replace or interchangeability is possible and improve the quality and reliability improves the reputation of the company then sometimes it can go and ensure the safety and sometimes it will go and it will result in a overall cost reduction so all these are the benefits of the standardization so accordingly based on the standardization you can go and modify these norms Okay, so the preferred number series uh, we are going to discuss in the next lecture so i'll see i'll i'll have a detailed explanation uh, what are the preferred number what are their uses okay so thanks uh,